Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon here, bringing you guys back another vlog. This one's gonna be posted kind of early now that I think of it, but you know, that doesn't matter. But uh, as you guys saw from the title, it's gonna be ways to know if it's true love. And I don't know, for some reason I had a dream, and I was just like, I kinda have to make this video, I guess. I don't know, but here goes the first one, guys. Okay, so the first one is the first step, or the first sequence, is you know, to have trust with each other. And either that's, you know, letting that person trust, or having trust enough for that person so that they can go away for the weekend and you not have to question them being with somebody else, or them doing, like, illegal stuff, like, you have to have enough trust for that person and, you know, do this and that. And uh, I'm going to be bringing in, like, my past relationships into this, too. Uh, I'm not afraid to say it, I guess. Um, I think I've dated eight or nine girls throughout my life now, I guess. I don't know, you guys are probably just like, Brandon, you're a, you're, you know, you're a womanizer, you, you're just a man whore. Not true, actually, I did care for every single one of them, it just didn't last, uh, time-wise, I guess. Um, but anyways, you have to have trust, and I learned that from, uh, a lot of my relationships, that some reasons were just because we didn't trust each other, which is a bad start, to be honest with. And, uh, for a middle schooler, I can tell you I had a different perspective back then. Um, every middle school, or mostly every middle school guy, was all about looks. And yes, uh, I was about that too in middle school, but you know, I did care if they were having bad grades or something, you know. I trusted them to lift those grades up. Even though it wasn't my responsibility, I felt like I had something to do with it, kind of thing. But overall, you have to have trust or else you won't be able... You won't be able to live with each other knowing that the other person's doing something that you don't even know about. But yeah, that's the first little sequence. Okay, so the next little thing um, is to have positive vibes always because negativity brings your relationship down. And um, if you don't have a positive vibes, like positive vibes, like give each other positive feedback, you know. Tell her that she's beautiful. Tell him that he's, you know, adorable. Um... You know, always give each other hugs and, like, do all that stuff. Because if you're all negative and you're just, uh, talking smack to each other, that's not only bad, it's an abusive relationship as well. Um, uh, mental, an emotional, uh, abusive relationship. Because nobody wants to be put down. But, uh, yeah, always try to keep each other up. That's never happened to any of my, uh, relationships. I've always tried to keep things in the upside. And, um, yeah, basically... I don't know, like, compliment each other, I guess. And you, you, every couple has their own, like, different things. Like, they have their own little, it's kind of like inside jokes but for themselves. You tell each other that because that always, well, for me, at least for me, that's, like, one of the coolest things ever that you could do. Like, if you remember an inside joke, you know, you're respectful. But, yeah, here's the next little thing. Okay, so the next little thing is telling each other or being intimate with each other. And that can mean like several things because intimacy is like a whole category of different things and I'm not going to specify in each little category because you guys should know what intimacy is but if you don't search it up uh, it's kind of like what I was saying last thing yeah you know kiss each other tell each other how you feel go go travel places you know they're um, your significant other or your partners there for a reason so might as well tell them things that you want to tell them and obviously we all have our secrets and stuff, but eventually let them on to that. Eventually, don't just spill it all at once. Um, yeah, but in, without intimacy, I think a relationship can't really stand on its foundation because you have really nothing to improve upon. Like you're not doing anything, you're just two normal people. It's like, yeah, it's like this. It's like you, you're two normal people on a bus and you just say hello to each other. That's basically all you're doing. But if you got more, I kind of burped there. That was a bad burp. Oh, excuse me, guys. If you want uh, to build your relationship and take it a farther step, you're going to have to use intimacy, and that's based on both of you, on how intimate you want to be with each other and which ways you want to be intimate. But that's really just about both of you guys. It can't be one person wants to do this thing and the other person wants to do the other thing. Um, but yeah, here's the next little bit. Okay, so the next little thing is taking each other's opinions or ideas into consideration and whether that be where you guys want to eat or what you're going to do today or if you're ever going to do something today or let's say somebody wants to have I don't know somebody says oh you want to meet my parents today or next week and the other person's not ready 
you shouldn't force that upon them, like, you know, have their opinion, you're like, okay, they're not ready for this, uh, and slow it down a bit, because their opinions really do matter, because, um, two people have to, in a relationship, two people have to come together and become as one, basically, and I'm not saying they have to think identically, but they have to think somewhat the same, because if they're too different, then it won't work out, but if they're too similar, they'll eventually get bored of each other. But have different opinions and be ready to like counter each other's um, ideas. And this also comes with like, um, in the stage for eating, uh, somebody wants pizza, the other person wants tacos. You know, put your ideas together. Maybe you'll get pizza today, tacos the next year. Maybe you get both that same day. You know, put both your opinions into consideration. Don't be a, a selfish person. This in a relationship is not called self-sufficiency anymore. It's because you have another person with you. They can help build you as well, you can help build them, it's not self-sufficiency anymore. You could rely on the other person to help you out in a healthy relationship. So you don't have to do all the hard work yourself, you could both share that hard work. And at the end, it'll, it'll pay off. I think it's more effective to uh, deal with problems in a relationship, like uh, and say family problems in a relationship, because you can tell somebody that you really trust and uh, they'll give you your, they'll give you an honest feedback. But that's in a healthy relationship. Here's the next little bit. Okay, the next little thing is, um, let me see. Oh, it's being able to forgive each other, and rather that person, you know, lied to you or cheated on you, you have to be ready to forgive if you want to, if you're ready, and if the other person's ready, if they're truly sorry then you have to be able to forgive them and you know take into consideration that people do make mistakes and I don't know like forgiveness is a step closer to building more trust I guess that person breaks your trust but if you're willing to forgive them that means you're willing to build your trust back and willing to work on it again uh, forgiveness is a very like delicate topic because not many people are willing to forgive. Um, let's put me for example. Um, I've never dated a girl more than once. Like if I if I liked a girl and then it didn't work out, I never went back to go date them, to go th um, date them again. <clears throat> Reasons being is because you know where are we gonna start off? Like I know a lot about you already and that kind of thing, but it takes time to forgive I guess and I forgive pretty quickly because I could see things from both sides and, you know, I, I get what you have to do um, I forgave you but that doesn't mean that we're gonna come back together is what I'm saying and you know it's really your choice and the other person's choice uh, depending on who did the line or whatever or who did something to uh, disconnect the trust a little bit it all really depends on them, like you can't really make the call for them anymore when it comes to this reason being is because they're their own person, they have to make their own um, decisions at times, like big decisions like these, and you know, you can't, sadly you can't be, two people can't be included for this because um, once another person's included they'll probably try like bribing methods, they'll be like oh, I won't do this again, or you know, things like that. If they're truly not sorry, don't forgive. Is what I'm saying because certain people could just be accusing you and that again is another abusive relationship which you don't want to be a part of because nobody wants to be used nobody wants to be abused is what I'm saying abuse use and abuse yeah and uh, forgiveness is a step to build back trust if you want to or if the other person wants to and if they don't then this brings me up to the next topic okay so the next little topic the last one is um, just making each other happy, even if it's not with you. And um, that being said, you know, you can love a person, or even before that, if you if you like somebody, but you see that they're happy with somebody else, just let it go. I mean, not totally let it go. Obviously, feelings like that don't wear away easily. But um, you eventually have to learn that maybe you're not the right person, you're not the right man, you're not the right girl for for that certain person and it's a hard decision to make like that for yourself because you find something that you um, as a person you find something that that other person has that you like and it's hard to let that go because it's kind of a magical moment because you get to find somebody that you can relate to that you could trust that you, know, you could tell everything to 
But you had to eventually let that person go, but it's not working out for it, um, any of the two of you. And it's a sad moment to do that. And yes, like I've said before, I've dated eight or nine girls. I lost track. I could go back and count, but you know, it's, it's not. Um, it's a hard thing. And even though I've done this many times, and it's only happened to me once, letting somebody go is not the... It's not the easiest thing. It's not you with experience it gets easier. It really isn't because uh, if you really care for that person, it's not going to come easily. Is what I'm saying. And um, many people could, they have different methods of coping with it, but mine's, or mine, I don't know, it's a different topic, never mind. Um, my method is just talking it out with that other person. And uh, I think any of my ex-girlfriends could tell any of you that I was never mad whenever things had to go down south. They were never mad. It's because I sat down and had a conversation with them saying it didn't work out for these and these reasons. And uh, it's a sad moment, but you, if you want to, this is my thing. A lot of guys don't do this that often. And a lot of guys would say they do do this, but they really don't. Um, I just want to, I don't want to avoid you, I want to, I don't know, I just want to still get to know you, but just not the same way, not in a relationship, dating relationship. You know, we could be friends again, we could hang out, I could invite you places, or you could invite me places, but it's never going to be the same. And that's one of the hardest things, especially, that's if you're in a relationship, but if you're not in a relationship and you just like this person, you have to understand their boundaries as well, and if they're happy with somebody else, then you have to let it be. And for me, one of the hardest things, feelings that I can't get rid of, is jealousy. And jealousy is one of those feelings that you're just like, you can't really deal with it uh, a certain way. I've tried dealing with it, say, drinking, with, drinking tea or meditation or go work out or something. I can't let it go in a positive way. I don't even try to do it in a negative way, like punching things, or punching people, or punching things, or like yelling, or stuff like that. Even though they're effective ways, and it can potentially, I'm not that sort of person to let things out in a negative way. And it's a, jealousy is a really hard feeling to get rid of. And when you, especially when I'm jealous, I don't put that down as easily as other people do. Um. I don't know, it's probably because you work so hard to get, a, per, to get to know a person and you want to know this person, but then somebody else, somebody better comes into their lives and they, you know, take part with that person. And that's where it hurts, is for what I'm saying. Because you try your best, you do your best, and you both recognize that, but then somebody else comes and they, they're just better, is what I'm saying. And you can't really do anything about it. Sure, you can use your words, try to get that person back, but... I think once you start feeling jealous, your choices are limited. And yeah, that's kind of what I... It's kind of what I wanted to, to express. And some of these things in the video, I kind of feel myself at times. And... Yeah, I don't know why I dreamt this, but, you know, it was a good idea, I guess. I like I like me doing videos early in the morning, gives me motivation to wake up. But, uh, thank you guys for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if any, any of you guys are wondering, like, when are you, like, going to press because these videos have been like, depressing? No, this is just, uh, this video has just been because I dreamt about this and I kind of felt, like, taking it out. But thank you guys for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.